Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel where we are discussing the integration configurations or the different integration services in Azure. In today's video, we will discuss about uh, a new announcement. This is a Microsoft official documentation on microsoftdocs.microsoft.com. As per this particular documentation, you can have a SSH file transfer protocol configured, which is SFTP configured onto your Microsoft Azure Blob Storage. What does it mean that you do not need a dedicated SFTP license or SFTP configuration in your application. You just need to, to create a storage account in your in Azure environment and that storage account can be treated as the SFTP server for your application, which you can use in many, many scenario as per your business need. As per this particular documentation, the steps are very easy, which I'll show you in this particular demonstration. How do you configure the SFTP onto a blob storage? And also we'll discuss about some of its limitation as the feature right now comes up with certain limitations as well. Hi, my name is Rakesh Suryavanshi and you're watching Be Learner. So to configure the SFTP server onto a Microsoft storage account or the blob storage, the very first thing you need is a blob storage or in fact bef before that you need to enable a feature in your azure subscription and for that you have to go to the feature section in the subscription for example this is my azure subscription here in the preview feature if you search for sftp and this is what you need to register for. So this is a SFTP support in Azure Blob Storage. I have already registered this particular feature on my given subscription. But in case if you do not, then this is the very first thing you need. You need to enable this particular feature on your subscription. Once it is enabled, what you need to do is you need to create a new storage account. So what I'll do, I'll create a new storage account. To create a storage account, you can search with the keyword storage account or you will find the storage account service right here at this particular section on the storage, which is this option. Create new storage account. As we know that this storage account name has to be unique and it should uh, be within the 24 character range with a small letter. So that's the unique name which we'll be providing as per our demo. I'll use the existing logic app demonstration resource group and here I'll say storage account SFTP demo 001. Let's see if it is available. It says it's already been taken. So I'll say 10. Yes, it seems like this is available now and I'll use the location. Next, you can choose the recommended performance here for this storage account. But just for the demonstration, I'm going to choose the LRS. Now, if you go to the advanced section, under the advanced section, you need to enable the hierarchical namespace. And once you enable this hierarchical namespace, this enable SFTP checkbox is going to be enabled. And then you just click on enable SFTP and that says that local user feature will be enabled with SFTP. Create local user identities to access the SFTP endpoint after the storage account is being created. It means that First, you have to create a storage account and then we have to create a different SFTP user account which can be used to connect to the SF connect to this storage account as an SSH protocol using those user accounts. I'll show you in a moment how do you do that. I'll click on networking. I don't want to set up a networking, but in case if you have a requirement, then you can set up the networking as well. I'll click on review. I'll keep all the default setting as is. I'm not going to change for this particular demonstration. Now click on create and that will create a storage account for you in your given subscription. That will take a moment to create a storage account. The storage account has been created. Let me refresh this. The storage account has been created. Let me refresh this. I'll open the storage account and then if you scroll to the left blade at the bottom, you will see your SFTP settings under the settings plate. And here is the SFTP configuration which you need to configure. And that's what the local user I was referring to. So you need to set up a local user account, which can be used to connect to this storage account as an SFTP account. Now, before that, first of all, we need to set up a container, which can be used to, which can be used to upload or download the file from. 
So I'm going to say upload as the container name uh, for my SFTP. I'll click on SFTP. As we already have this, uh, the container created, I'll click add user. I'll give it a username as the SFTP admin. I'll use SSS password. You can also use the SSH key pair uh, for the public key and private key uh, authentication. But for the demonstration, I'm going to use the SSH password option. I'll click on next and that will go to the next tab to set up the permission onto the container we, uh, which we have created for this SSH configuration or the SFTP configuration. I'll choose the container container which we have created. If you have multiple container, then you can choose those multiple containers to configure as an SFTP. Now I'll select the permission on this particular selected container. So I'll say read, write, create and delete just for the demonstration. Here you need to provide the home directory password. So a uh, home directory name. So in this case, the name of my container. And if you have any in inner folder, for example, upload, I'll say files. So you can upload that as well. At the moment, I do not have any inner file, so I cannot create it. But if you want to create a file, then first you have to create that particular file onto the container and then you can provide the path as well. I will click on add. That will set up a local user and that is the local user password I have. As you can see that it says the password will not be visible again. So you have to copy that particular password, though you can regenerate the same password or uh, the password for the same user account in case if you want to. But if you don't want to, then you need to make sure that you are copying this particular password so that you can connect to the SFTP using the given username and password. So I'll copy this particular password. I'll close this. I'll save this password somewhere. Now, this is your user account, which is SFTP admin. This is your domain name, which is the name of your storage account, then your username and then the blob dot story account block. So now what I'll do, I'll go to the WinCP, WinCSCP, I'll, which is a software to connect to the SFTP. Here is my WinSCP. I'll create, click on new session. I'll select a new site. And here we'll provide the host name which we have. So I'll copy this host name from the connection string that will automatically add the username. So this is going to be our username and the password which we have copied the password. That's the password we are going to use. Port number as it is a SFTP. So port number is going to be 22. I'll say yes and that will add the keys on my local machine. So I'll accept that. And there you go. So we have got the SFTP configured and that's the SFTP which we have on our machine. So now what I can do, I can create a new folder. I can say files here. Next inside the file, I can put any file. I'll copy this logic app name Excel file just for the demonstration as this file has been copied. I'll also copy this index.html file. Now the file has been uploaded to the SFTP. To verify that, I'll go to the containers. I'll go to the upload container and inside the upload container, as you can see that we have the files folder, which we have created. And also we have got those two files, which is, which are being uploaded. So now the beauty of this is though we have connected to this storage container as an SSH client or the SFTP user client, I am able to connect and upload the file to there. Similarly, I can read those files. So let's say if I upload any file right here from this particular storage account option or from the storage explorer, then those files will be available on my SSH. I'll show you a demonstration of that. And for the demonstration, I have uploaded this particular file directly from the storage account and let's look at that if the file is available on the SFTP as and you can see that the file is already automatically available on this particular SFTP container or SFTP folder. So this proves the demonstration of using the 
storage account container or the Azure Blob storage container as an SFTP. So you can use the same folder or container to upload the files as an SFTP file using the SSH connection or you can use the container with your storage explorer or from your .NET client or the blob storage client to upload or download the file. Similarly, if I delete, obviously it's going to delete the file right from there. Now, the good thing about this particular configuration is that either you manage all your file, let's say uh, you have got one central location, you can use that particular location to upload or download the file using the SSH connection using the SFTP or you can use the uploaded file the, or you can the file which are being uploaded using the SSH you can use those file using your .NET blob container client to manage those file like download the content and manipulate the file data as per your business logic and that's going to be a very very uh, crucial or the important part of it you do not have to rely on two different license software you do not have to pay for two different things uh, as it is a central location so you are going you are going to save the management overhead as well as the cost saving as well now let's talk about some of the limitation of this particular feature as this is a a new feature so this comes with a certain number of limitations so the very first limitation we have is there are some client version which are which are currently unsupported so these are the listed client names which are not supported it means that you cannot use these clients to connect to the ssh connection on the sftp which is configured on the azure blob storage so one of the important is premico and the ssh.net this is the win the uh, SSH.NET client is the client, let's say, uh, the client which you write to download or upload the file or manage file from your .NET application. If you have you written a client, uh, the SFTP client uh, code to manage your file. But to me, it doesn't may uh, it's not a blocker as because let's say if I have a client requirement wherein some application is managing to upload the file on SSH, which is an ultimately your storage account. Then instead of writing the SSH.NET client, I could write the blob storage client, which can manage the file. So I don't have to rely on SSH.NET client because I know that SSH.NET has anyways has a limitation uh, in terms of the larger files, whereas the blob storage is much more suitable for the large blob client and it is much more performance efficient. So to me, I would go for the blob storage client in, in case if I need to make a decision over the SSH versus the blob storage client written in the .NET. Now, again, if in even though if you have or your application is existing code is written on the SSH.NET and you have, a, uh, you would like to continue using that particular code, then you need to keep an eye on this particular support limitation page because it says that it's not a exhaustive and it may change over the time. So it might be possible that after a couple of months, this they will provide the connectivity to this particular SSH client and your application would be supportive for that as well. There are some other limitations to this uh, client at the moment. As you can see that I, in, in the demonstration at the beginning, I have mentioned that you cannot use the uh, containers like a log container or the blob change feed container root container or web container which are which are kind of a reserve container so you cannot make those container as your ssh container because these are reserved for the microsoft to manage their own uh, system files or system data so uh, that's something which you cannot do that okay and uh, you can refer to this documentation in case if you want to go on to the details. My objective of this particular demonstration is just to show you how this feature is works and it's going to take over the need of the uh, dedicated SFTP client in case if you are working or you are using any SSF, SSH client on your application. I hope this has given you some idea and some strategy to use this particular feature in your application. If it is, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching it. See you in the next video.